Hello and welcome to another Science Online Learning Day. As we continue to explore our solar system, our focus for today is what is the difference between a geocentric and heliocentric solar system? So through that, we're going to talk about a bunch of different historic solar system models, and then eventually you'll kind of process which ones make sense, which ones don't officially reaching the conclusion, which do we live in? Is our solar system geocentric or heliocentric? And you'll write a CER conclusion to support that claim. So that's kind of where we're building, trying to explain what do we live in? So go ahead and set up your focus notes. Our topic is solar system models. Eventually being able to answer this essential question, what is the difference between a geocentric and heliocentric solar system? And if you're doing this on the day that it was assigned, it is 1104. Otherwise, fill in whatever date you're taking it. And remember in our notes, the stuff that's in white is just things that I want to talk about. You don't have to write it, but write the other things down so that you for sure have enough notes to refer back to as needed. All right. Right, let's get into it. Solar system models. So we observe the night sky. This was a lot of times when we're trying to come up with models in science, it's based on some observation. So start noticing things. This happened hundreds and hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago. People notice things. So right now, just think about if you were to look at the night sky, what are at least three things you would notice? Go ahead and pause the video and just make your own list. What are three things you would notice if you looked at the night sky? Okay, so maybe you put down things like you'd see different lights, different patterns of lights. Lights are in different spots on certain days. Different lights are kind of the big thing. So why do we notice these things? Because there's more out there than just us sitting on the earth, right? There's stuff out there. And so people are trying to figure out, well, why, what are the, what is the stuff out there? And why does it look the way it does? Why does it move? What's happening? So a long time ago, people wanted to make a model to explain the night sky. So again, usually when we build any type of model in science, now it could be a physical model like these guys are doing, or it can be an idea that's explaining something. You start with an observation. So the observations that led to building a solar system model were there are planets that we notice, there are stars that we noticed, and the way the sun sets each day. These were the things that people kept observing and talking about that eventually led to the fact that we had to come up with a solar system model. So we create a model to explain those observations and to predict new things. That's the whole point of models. Explain what we see and predict other things that we might see later or eventually in the future. All right. So with that kind of background idea, let's continue on and let's just talk quick about um, models changing over time. And so just one more quick mention about that. The reason that models change over time is because people make new observations. This could be because of a new person. It could be from better technology. But because there's new observations, the old model sometimes doesn't fit anymore. So today, we're going to study the different key players from history that developed the solar system model that we kind of think of as our the model of our solar system today. Okay, so with all of that set up in terms of why we have models and what we know about models in general, go ahead and do a level one question. So level one question comes right from the notes. Here's a couple of different words that you might use. Um, something about identify how we start a model. Like, what do we do first? You know, something like that. Okay. So level one kind of question that comes right from the notes. Let's continue on. So the first guy I want to talk about is Aristotle. And I do need to just make a disclaimer that all of the people we're going to talk about do happen to be old dead white guys. And that's only because they were the people that had power. They were not the smartest. They were not the best. They weren't the only people studying astronomy, but they were the people who were in power. So they are the people that were written down in history. Remember, this is why we do our Meet a Scientist Monday is to put people in context in our science that are not just old dead white guys, but but any person from any culture, any age, any gender identity can be scientists. But the history, the history people we talk about tend to be old dead white guys. So just making that disclaimer, we accept it and we move on. So this is around 350 BC. So this is a long time ago. Here's what Aristotle saw. He noticed that when he observed the night sky, that the moon went around our earth and he thought that the sun moved around our earth. This is what he noticed. So to him, the most important thing in the universe is the Earth. So he put it at the center of his solar system model. 
This is known as a geocentric model. So centric because it's in the center, geo from land or earth. So geocentric model. So this is kind of a visual. So he put the earth at the center and then he's got um, different things like fixed stars and different planets that are all going around in these different kind of spheres. So that was what Aristotle came up with. It explained what was important to him. That's it. Aristarchus would be another um, BC kind of ancient Greece kind of person. And here's what he saw. He saw that it doesn't seem that the sun and the stars are moving at all. He didn't notice any parallax. Remember, we talked about this and said the reason that they didn't see parallax is because the stars are just so far away. They just didn't have the technology to notice it. But remember, at the time, they're just basing what they can see. The most important thing to Aristarchus was the sun. He actually valued it as a deity or a god. So that was why he put it at the center of his model. So you had Aristotle that was like, oh, the earth is most important. So I'll put that at the center. And Aristarchus was like, no, the sun is the most important. So I'll put that at the center. So that is a heliocentric model. Helio referring to sun centric because it's at the center. So he put the sun in the center and then he's got the different planets that are just kind of going around. All right. So this is what he predicted the universe to look like. Okay. So you've got two ancient Greek guys that just have their two ideas and that they really don't have anything much to build it on other than just what they think is important and what they saw. The problem is, is that there was so much support for the geocentric model. Aristarchus got in trouble for his beliefs, like for going against Aristotle. Aristotle was important and rich and, you know, at the time kind of famous and Aristarchus, not so much. So he got charged. He got in trouble, like charged legally for his beliefs. All right. So then there had to be something new that eventually made us look for a new model. So the next guy, Ptolemy, again, this is still kind of BC time, but he made observations of planets and constellations. And then he also started making mathematical predictions to match those observations about where they would be located at certain different times of the year or different times of the month. And so those observations were why they moved on from Aristarchus. To him, also, the most important thing was that the Earth was in the center of everything. So this is another geocentric model. And he predicted that the Earth was at the center. And then you've got these different things in nested spheres. Think of it kind of like um, balls that fit inside each other. So you have one really big ball that has all of these other balls inside it. And that's where the planets and the sun are moving. Here's another version of it. You can kind of see, again, the Earth at the center, and then you've got all of these other little motions around it. Those are referred to as epicycles. So these different patterns of kind of circular patterns that go around the Earth, those are referred to as epicycles. All right, so why didn't we stop at the Ptolemy model? Well, his predictions weren't great. He did the best he could with the technology and the math that was known at the time, but eventually people started coming up with observations that did not fit his model anymore. So we had to keep going. All right, so there's our first few um, different models. So go ahead and take a little break and do a level two kind of question. A contrast would be a great one. Um, contrast Aristotle and Aristarchus um, solar system models. That would be a great one. Sketch a picture of the Aristotle model. That would be a great idea, some kind of level two sketch. All right, let's continue on. Next, we're going to talk about Copernicus. So now we're into a little bit more modern. We're, we're in AD time, so 1532. Here's what he assumed. He assumed that all the spheres in the universe go around the sun and that the apparent motion of the sun is because the earth has more than one motion. So that would be a way to explain what we're noticing about the earth. So then he found data to match what he saw. That can be sometimes the tricky thing about um, data, that you can convince yourself you're seeing what you want to see if you don't have great technology to help you figure it out. To him, the most important thing is that the sun is glorious and I, the model should be simple. So we have another heliocentric model. He put the sun at the center. And then you've got different ways that the earth can move. So notice that it can go around like this in different ways, kind of patterns. And then that would explain why sometimes it looks like the sun is moving. So that's what Copernicus came up with. Tycho Brahe is the next guy we're going to talk about. So this is a little bit later, 1572. So he knew about the Copernicus model. He knew about the Ptolemy model. 
And he also, in his studies, figured out, you know what? The earth is too heavy. How could the earth be moving? And then also he didn't think there was any parallax. It wasn't until later when he got a little bit better with technology that he was able to notice it. But again, it didn't seem like there was any parallax of stars. So to him, it was important that he come up with a model that sort of incorporated or brought in all of these other ideas. So he kind of came up with the geocentric model and kind of a heliocentric model. So that's kind of the special thing about his is he sort of brings everybody's idea. He says that the sun and the moon go around the earth, but then the other planets go around the sun. So again, it's kind of a blend of both helio and geocentric. So here's our earth and the sun goes around the earth, but then all of the other planets go around the sun. So that would be a way. So what was important to him was kind of a compromise. Can we find a model that incorporates all of the previous ideas, saying that all those other previous ideas had merit on some level? Next, we'll talk about Galileo Galilei. So this is a little bit later. Now we're at like 1592. So he saw that the tides were evidence of the earth moving. So the fact that you have some time during the month when water level comes in really far on like ocean shores, and then other times when the water doesn't come in as far, those movement of tides made him conclude that the earth must be moving. He also knew about all the different models. So to him, he also wanted to incorporate all those things that he believed were true from the previous idea, but then also this idea that the earth is moving. So he supported the Copernicus model, so again, heliocentric, and he predicted the universe looked like this. Sun at the center, the earth is moving around the sun, and then you've got these stars kind of super far away. So here's the thing about Galileo, though. The heliocentric idea, as it started to get more and more popular, was a huge controversy. And Galileo was actually arrested, and he remained under house arrest, meaning he could not leave and go like teach and talk to other people until he died. So this was just an interesting part in history where people actually got arrested for their scientific beliefs if it didn't agree with what was kind of popular at the time based on the leaders. So kind of a scary thing to think about, like people being arrested just for their ideas. We see that some now, like think about social unrest that we see happening because of people having beliefs and ideas about race and culture and politics. And so not so different, even though this was hundreds of years ago, just something to kind of of think about, think about those connections. All right, we're going to talk about one more guy, um, Johannes Kepler. So this is about 1600, and here's what he saw. He was working with Brahe, so Tycho Brahe. So he saw the same kinds of stuff that he did. So we're back to a heliocentric model because Mars didn't seem to fit the same pattern as Copernicus thought that it did. So what Kepler wanted to do was to try to explain the observations of Mars in addition to the work that Tycho Brahe figured out and other people figured out. So he was the first guy to come up with this idea that the um, the universe doesn't go in circular patterns. It's more of an oval or an elliptical or an ellipsis pattern. So that was kind of the first time we came up with that idea. So sun in the center, and then you've got these Um, kind of oval or elliptical patterns instead of circular. And then that would explain why things aren't the perfect observations that other people um, thought were true, but we don't really see. Okay. So that is a whole bunch of different ideas about the solar system. So now it's time to kind of put those ideas together. Um, Go ahead and take your third brain break, write a level three three question, something about um, predict what a new solar system model might look like or defend heliocentric model or defend um, or argue against geocentric model, whichever one you wanted to pick would be a good level three kind of question. That brings us to the end of our notes for today. So here's your to-do list. If you didn't do so already, finish any Costa questions and then also write a summary. Remember the EQ for today was what's the difference between heliocentric and geocentric. That's all you need to focus on for your summary. And then I do have an assignment called the solar system models. In order to answer, there's eight questions on this model or on this assignment. You'll use what we talked about in today's notes, but there's also some extra websites. There's a short video, a couple readings that you could use that would kind of, if the way I explained it 
um, didn't fully answer everything for you. I'm giving you some other resources. Obviously, I'm just one teacher, one explainer, but sometimes it's nice to hear from other voices or other people. So in today's folder on Schoology, there are some other websites you can look at to help you finish that assignment. And then just know that I'm using today's assignment as attendance. So if you're not going to finish the assignment today, you need to send me a message saying you've started it. You've done some work today to count as being a, um, as attendance. Um, and you could also come to my office hours if you needed help finishing the assignment. All right. If you are watching this on the day it was assigned on Wednesday, then our next Zoom session will be tomorrow. So we'll see you then. Thanks for listening. Bye.